G'day YouTube, it's Turbo Tristan. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be installing some water spray to my intercooler and radiator setup. Been experiencing a few issues with heating. So what I'm going to do is recycle my window washer bottle. Yes, I painted it fluoro green to match the rest of the engine bay. And I'm going to explain how I'm going to do it, what the method behind my madness is. So come along for the ride. We've got to spool up, and to spool up, we need everything to be cooled down. So, cool down and spool up. We're going to be installing some water spray to my radiator and intercooler. There's a number of issues here. Firstly, is heat in the engine bay when you turbocharge your D-series or any Honda. Everything getting hot is a major problem. I did get a turbo blanket just to block some of the heat coming off the turbine housing. That seems to be working well. It was only 30 bucks. Another thing that I would need to do, and it's still on the cards, is to seal off around the radiator so all the air that's hitting it has to go through it. So you can see this gap here and around here isn't good. You actually need that sealed so that it sucks all the air through the radiator, not around it. Uh, I need to also get a heat shield on here. This requires me to drill and tap these little stands, which are built into the cast iron manifold. And then I could make a heat shield and sort of cover that. Now you can buy that stuff online. You see it on a lot of factory cars. It's like a dimpled aluminium sort of heat shield. So I could do that for sure. That's one thing that's on the cards. I'll double check bleeding the radiator or the coolant system. One thing I'm noticing though, now that I've got my PowerTune digital dash, which runs directly from my Haltech, which is a really cool feature. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. I'll show you again once we start the car up and bleed the cooling system and test out the water spray. It's got live timing telling me my intake air temperature, which is the sensor just down here. That's telling me how hot the air is after it's gone through the intercooler and into the engine. And the other thing it tells me is my coolant temperature, which is measured from one of the sensors down there. And that tells me how hot the water is going through the engine through the radiator. Most of the time, the water sits around about 85 degrees. I do have a thermostat in there. And the reason I have one in is to slow the water down so it actually has time to go through the radiator and get cooled. Makes sense, put a thermostat in there, slow the water down, let it go through the radiator, let it cool, let it go back through the engine and repeat the process. So this thermostat that's in there is a stock standard D16 thermostat. I have drilled four five millimeter holes through there. So even when the thermostat's closed, it's still letting the water pass through. So it's like a high flow. Um, but then when everything heats up, thermostat opens, it's back to normal again. So there's still a restriction in there, not as much as standard. So it's time to get started on today's project. This is the factory window washer bottle from an EK Civic. It lives just up here under the inner guard. There's a hole where this nozzle feeds through and it sits in the engine bay so you can fill it up nice and easily. You'll notice here is a bunch of wires that I've just cable tied out of the road. Normally when I decide I'm not using something, I just snip the wires off. I kept these. Don't ask me why, but it's a good thing because it means I can just plug that in. What I'm going to do is reroute this hose, which normally would go up under the bonnet and to the squirters on the bonnet. So what I'm going to do is run some of this flexible tubing. I went down to Bunnings, which is my local hardware store. If you're in America, I think it's called Lowe's. Very similar, um, but just my hardware store. Got some four millimeter flexible rubber line. It's quite hard. It's used for irrigation, so watering your, your garden. I got a couple of straight hard plastic ones. I got some spray nozzles. They only come in packs of 10. I'm probably only going to need two or three of them. And I got some T pieces. Again, I'm probably only going to need two or three of these, but they come in packs of 10. So my plan today is to fit this back in the car, plug it in, fill it up with water. I did a test. This holds when you fill it all the way up to the top around about here. This holds around three liters of water, which is 
Perfect, definitely get me out of trouble for now. This is not the be all and end all fix for my heating problems. I'll still need to do some air ducts and guides uh, to direct air into the radiator. We're also gonna put one of the squirters onto the intercooler just to help the air intake temps. They're not too bad really. The most I've seen is around 50 degrees Celsius uh, and that was on a 40 degree Celsius day. One thing you guys need to be aware of is having the Haltech running all the factory sensors in this car, I can see exactly what the temperatures are. And when the needle is halfway on your temp gauge between hot and cold, right in the middle, right at medium, that's actually around 90 to 95 degrees. Even when it goes up towards boiling point at 100 degrees Celsius, it's still sitting midway on the gauge. So you guys need to be aware they do run hot Adding a turbo makes it even hotter, makes it worse. You really want it around about 85 to 90 degrees is a nice temperature. So that's what I'm gonna try and achieve today. So hopefully I'm in frame, but what I'm going to do now is start laying out some pipe, laying some cable. So what I'm going to do is run some hose up under along this radiator support. I think that's going to be the best. I'll have to section it off with some T pieces and cable tie it up here so it's all out of the road. We're just gonna have to try it and see guys. Never done anything like this before. Let's just send it, shall we? Now the hose and fittings from the hardware store uh, cost around 20, 30 bucks. You have to buy more than you're ever gonna need but they don't sell it in small quantities. So with these little fittings that you get, they're sort of threaded uh, and they have a 90 degree spray pattern. So they go in a V and spray out. You can get 360 and 180 degree ones, but because we want to concentrate a spray right onto the radiator, I just went with the 90 degrees. So what we need to do is thread those in and then select how we're going to have them pointing. So we can sort of put two ends on one piece of T-piece and then sort of tie it back behind this crash bar. Then it's gonna spray onto the intercooler and onto the radiator. I think one nozzle on each should be enough. You don't wanna to put too many because then you're just going to end up um, losing pressure. So you want it to mist and atomize. So we're gonna do one of each and then I'll have to drill a small hole in this crash bar so that I can just cable tie it on. So it's not the end of the world. What I've got is my trusty St. George Dragons coffee cup filled with boiling water. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just eyeball that and give it a cut. Dip it in my boiling water, just get it a bit softer. Push the T-piece in. Might leave that in a bit longer actually. I may even just use the flexible line. Might work out better. As long as these fittings will stay in there. And it looks like they will. We'll try it with the hard lines. If I can't get these to press in, uh, then we'll use the rubber line. So the hot water seems to work. I prefer to use the hard lines where possible. So what we need to do is just take the little fitting and thread it into the pipe. 
sort of tap its own way in there it's pretty tight you could probably use some pliers if you wanted to it's pretty brutal on your fingers screw that in nice all right so you've got to make sure that your spray is going the correct way so what I'm going to do is take some cable ties and I'm going to cable tie this behind here. We're going to have a nice spray onto the intercooler and have a nice spray onto the radiator. Hopefully that will help uh, in the Australian summer heat. Only time will tell if we need to. I've got plenty more T-pieces. I've got plenty more fittings. As I mentioned, you have to buy way too many. It's pretty overkill. So the rubber line is onto the water pump. We've topped that up full of water, running the line through the crash bar, cable tied in place just here. We've got the hard stalk sticking out here, which is spraying in a V pattern like this onto the intercooler. Then we have a T piece, one side going this way, looping around and spraying in a V pattern like this onto the radiator and then around the other side and spraying out that way. So these two should crisscross and give a nice mist. Hopefully it doesn't dribble out. I don't know. Let's test it. Hopefully that looked good. Let's check the intercooler now. Beautiful. I can see all of these rows are just full of water. So there was one thing that I didn't factor in in my science experiment. Although the spray works awesome on all three ports, I do have a little problem. It's called gravity. There's nothing I can do about it. So I'm going to have to take this out and reroute it all the way around now and figure out how to get this so it's going to come from the bottom up. This time around, we've factored in gravity. I've ran the line all the way up along the top underneath here. And now all of the lines go down and then point up. So the ones down here, they go to a T piece, down and around and up, down and around and up. And this one goes down under the intercooler and up. So let's give it a spray. If that still wants to drip, then I might have to ditch the intercooler spray and just keep it on the radiator. As I mentioned, the radiator is the one that I was worried about, not so much the intercooler. That was just an added bonus. It's not stopping, which means it's a fail. So I think for now, the best thing would be to do is just ditch that T-piece and just go straight down into there, which is a shame. I just can't get around gravity, guys. I'm sorry. So I feel smart and I feel dumb at the same time. We did what I set out to achieve, which was to put some water spray on the radiator. The bonus would have been water spray on the intercooler, which comes standard on a lot of older 90s JDM cars, like a lot of Evos, they have water spray factory. Same sort of setup, washer bottle, squirts, uh, a secondary pump all over the intercooler. In this case, I only really need it on the radiator intercooler air intake temps are fine so we'll see uh, what the effects are i'm going to do a compression check and test the engine now that it's had about 300 k's on it so i'm going to quickly do that all four cylinders all perfectly equal and even compression uh, which was at 170 psi now when i did this without driving the car just after having it running for Five minutes, 10 minutes, it was at 160. It's gone up 10 PSI. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna go up more, if that's how it works. I really don't know. This is the first engine I've ever built. While the engine was warming up, I decided I'd check the oil catch can and I freaked myself out. I thought I had a blown head gasket because when I emptied the oil catch can, it was milky and white. Then I checked the oil I uh, looked inside the rocket cover and I was expecting the worst but then I remembered that my compression was all even, equal, um, the car drives fine. I checked the dipstick, the dipstick was clean, 
I looked inside the rocket cover, it was clean. Under the oil cap, clean. And uh, we'll see how we go. We might still have a blown head gasket, but so let's take a look. Take a look at the temperature on the dash. So it's at 84 degrees. Air intake temperature is at 33. Everything seems to be in order. Fans going strong. Yesterday I took the car for a drive as I said I would. Tried to get it up to temperature and test out the water spray. Uh, didn't work. Temperature went up. I was wondering what's going on. Kept hitting the, the paddle. It wouldn't work. So I'm just using the windscreen washer switch to activate it. But nothing worked. My wipers don't work. Uh, so I checked all my fuses. I actually blew a fuse. So just over to the temperature situation. It's at 90 degrees there and 42 air intake so 90 degrees is the water it's getting quite hot starting it to be a warm day i've ducked down to super cheap and got a packet of fuses the fuse that came out was a 20 it's blowing right in the middle there as you can maybe see on the camera because i don't know anything about electronics i've gone and bought 30s i figure hopefully that will keep it working if it blows this uh, then I've got a big issue electrically and I'll have to trace it back But I'm just going to shove one of these bad boys in and send it. Hopefully my car doesn't burn down to the ground Is that it? Hey, we got wipers. We're at 98 Let's spray that Cool it down Wipers are still working Guys, we're currently at the traffic lights. There's no airflow going into the front of the car. The temperature is at 101 degrees. The warnings come on. And just take a look at the factory gauge. It's sitting at halfway. So to most people without a digital readout would think that the car is fine and it's not hot at all. But we're at 102. The gauge is halfway. So Honda boys, tell me if that's normal. Doesn't seem normal to me, we're boiling. Boiling point is 99.8 degrees. So here we go, let's get some airflow. It definitely works. 
We're going to pull up to a set of lights now and see if the temperature goes back up. I won't give it a squirt, I'll leave it. Seven. It's alright, I can stay there. The air intake temperature's dropped down to 36. Got a bit of air flow moving through the car. I still need to get a wheel alignment. If anyone in southeast Melbourne wants to hook me up, comment below. Drive straight, just the steering wheel's crooked. Back down to 88 degrees. So after a little bit more driving and squirting and spraying, I pretty much emptied out the tank. Uh, I noticed every time I hit the squirter, the temperature would go up by one degree and then fall down by about five or six, um, depending on the airspeed coming through the car. Without using the squirter, it does continue to rise. It doesn't matter if the airflow is coming through the front of the car or not. I've just got home. I've switched the engine off after letting it cool down for a minute cycling through uh, I've been squirting and testing I haven't put the hose on it yet we're down to 86 so I've been home around about two or three minutes and squirted it a few times you can certainly see it's working here's all the water I've been squirting out and it's definitely hitting there unfortunately I can't be in two places at once so hopefully when I watch this back I can see the spray pattern onto the radiator there but it uses a fair bit of water it's too early to tell whether it's a win or a fail uh, it definitely works but it doesn't work as efficiently as I had hoped I failed by not being able to do the intercooler water spray it just sits too low in the engine bay and gravity feed just gonna let that water trickle out over time anyway it still doesn't change the fact that my engine is still getting hot it's still only running I'm not holding it at full boost for you know seconds and minutes at a time it's just hitting the hardest I've hit it it did hit 14 psi but it was only for a second then back down uh, backing off I'm still running the engine in usually I see around six or seven psi just when I accelerate and change gears at low RPM running in the motor. I still need to shroud the front of the radiator, do some ducting. We're going to be doing the headlight duct in the next video. As you'll see, I've already hollowed this out. I've just followed the line there and I'm going to smooth this out and I'm just deciding whether I use sticky tape to make a tube and a tunnel and then fiberglass around that or whether I get expander foam fill it up make it all solid but yet light and then make some really nice cone shaped pattern in there haven't decided yet but that's in the next video to come it is really really concerning for me that the car keeps getting hot it is australia it is 30 degrees outside all the way through summer the weird thing is the temperature dial doesn't move past halfway if you didn't have some kind of digital readout or analog readout directly from your radiator that tells you exactly the temperature, you'd never know that it's boiling at 100 degrees, sitting fine at halfway. It's not at hot. This cluster has only got 100,000 kilometers on it. Everything on it works. It's in great condition. I know the car that it came out of. It's perfect. So it's not a cluster issue. Uh, it's not a fuse issue, I've replaced all those. The 30 amp fuse trick did the trick. Uh, the car's not on fire, so that's good, which means there's no shorts anywhere. I don't know why it blew, it's just an old fuse probably. I do need to get a pressure sensor in the coolant to see if it's getting boost in there, if the head's lifted or anything like that. Compression's fine, it's at 170 psi across all four. I'd like it to be higher, I'd like it to be 200 psi, a bit more compression and response, but I think I listen to a lot of people about ring gaps on turbo cars. I open mine up slightly wider than factory, that's probably why my 
compression is a little bit lower, but it's all even, so that's all that matters, which means I can just add more boost. I do want to get a larger intercooler. I do want to get a larger full-size radiator. The only one that I've found so far is a Koyo radiator that they make for D and B series that go all the way along. It means I'm gonna have to clock my turbo, change my intercooler piping, and then a bigger intercooler. Maybe that will help. Maybe it'll just be a lot of money for nothing. I don't know. If anyone can help me out, drop a comment below because I'm scratching my head. The coolant system's bled, the thermostat's working, there's no leaks, everything's sweet. It's not using coolant, it's not using oil. The oil's clean, uh, although the catch can was dirty, but that's a catch can, that's what they do. Fill up with water from the E85 and oil and water makes a milky substance. The engine oil is clean though, and that's all I care about. I'm trying new things, I'm experimenting, I'm learning, and I'm teaching you guys what to do and what not to do. Hopefully there's some engineering geniuses, some maths geniuses out there that will help uh, with some ideas about how to make this work more efficiently. I didn't even finish high school, so I don't have any degrees to do all this stuff. I just make it up as I go along. Having said all of that, the channel's growing immensely. Um, I'm really, really happy with that. I'll, otherwise, I just wanted to say a really big thank you to all of the subscribers. The channel is growing by the day. I see it go up every single day, which is, it's like winning the lotto for me. It's really fun, it's really exciting. Uh, makes me feel good, makes me know I'm doing a great job and it inspires me to keep bringing out more content. However, there's 20.4% of you guys that I have to thank so much. You subscribed and I wouldn't be here without you guys, but that leaves 79.6% um, of you guys that are watching my videos. Thank you, I appreciate it, but aren't subscribed. So if you could subscribe, it's free. It takes one second, you just click subscribe and that's gonna help me grow the channel. It's gonna help YouTube recognize me. It's gonna help everyone see my videos. Maybe I can make some money out of it and I can buy a proper radiator, a proper spal cooling fan, a nice intercooler, and really get this thing cracking. Because once this thing is reliably flying, I'm gonna be doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Drag racing, track racing, strength racing, everything so it's all up to you guys this stuff costs money i don't have money not even a job at the moment that's why i'm experimenting but as always take your dirty finger that's covered in coolant click like click subscribe spool up bring the boost and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching